Welcome to this online training on Library Board Basics. I'm Roger Carswell, the Director of the Southeast Kansas Library System. Although many parts of this presentation, particularly when we talk about the Board Director relationship, are relevant to most public libraries, much of the rest of the content is based on Kansas law. I say this because once you put something on the web, you never know who might be viewing it. So that's my disclaimer. If you're not from Kansas, you won't find this very useful. In Kansas, libraries may be organized in several ways, including as city, county, township, and district libraries. This presentation focuses on district libraries. District libraries have a few things that are different about choosing board members and their terms, so it seemed best to do this as a separate presentation. First, let's talk about membership. District libraries have boards consisting of seven members. These members are elected in an annual meeting of the voters of the library district, which I'll get to shortly. Board members must themselves be qualified voters of the district. Board membership is an unpaid position, although they can be reimbursed expenses. And here's something which comes up quite often in smaller libraries. Board members cannot be paid for working at the library apart from their board role either. There's a legal doctrine called incompatibility of office, which holds that it's incompatible to be an employee of the board when you, that you're a member of. When a board member is paid, they become an employee of the board. So board members may volunteer at the library, but they cannot be paid. Moving on to terms of board members. All board terms are for four years and expire on the first Tuesday in April. There are no term limits for district library boards. When there are vacancies on the board, someone is appointed to that position by the chairperson of the board with the approval of the majority of the board. Those appointed to fill a vacancy serve the remainder of that unexpired term they were appointed to. Notice what I said about someone who is appointed to a vacancy filling out the remainder of that term. This means that libraries never get off the cycle of one or two board terms expiring annually and always in April. Sometimes we hear something like, we have three board members whose terms are up this year, or Mary's term expired in January. Actually, no, these things cannot be true. Boards will have three years where two terms expire, and then one year where there's only one term that does, and that four-year cycle will keep going on forever. So there will never be more than two members whose terms expire in the same year. I think the way these mistakes crop up is when there's a vacancy, and people assume that the person appointed serves four years from the date of appointment. But that's not the way it is. If your library has somehow gotten off cycle, what I recommend is that the board come to an agreement about which terms will expire in April of each of the next four years. One way that I'd recommend is to take the most recent two appointments and have them expire in the fourth year, and then work on back. Then make sure you stay on that schedule from there on out. Annual meetings are held on the first Tuesday in March each year. The law is very specific. These meetings are either at 2 o'clock p.m. or 7 o'clock p.m. There are only one or sometimes two items of business for the annual meeting. The primary item of business is to elect someone to the one or two seats on the board whose terms expire that year. The second item of business, if desired, is voting to change the time of the next year's meeting. If no vote is held, the time remains the same as this current year. But you can vote to change the time from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m or from 7 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. That's all a little weird, but that's the way it works. The board by law has the obligation to give notice of the annual meeting by publishing notice in the newspaper for two consecutive weeks, with the second notice being no less than six days prior to the annual meeting. And all qualified voters of the district may attend the annual meeting and may vote. The board sets a regular monthly meeting date and location. Special meetings can be called by the chair, or if the majority of the members request one, the chair has to call a meeting. For special meetings, there must be at least two days notice in writing to each member of the board, and this has to state the purpose of the special meeting. At the special meeting, the only business can be what's stated in the notice. The board's bylaws should identify when election of officers will be held. Most often, that's the first meeting after the new terms begin, which means either the April or May meeting, depending on when the board meeting date is. Remember, terms expire the first Tuesday of April, so if you meet on the first Monday of the month, 
That's usually before the newly elected board members take office. The law specifies electing a chair, a secretary, a treasurer, and such other officers as they may deem necessary, as it says in the law. One thing I want to be sure and point out is that when election of officers is done, the board should also designate who's going to be the library's representative to the board of the Southeast Kansas Library System. That can be the board president, another board member, or whoever the board chooses. One of the primary responsibilities of the board is, in cooperation with the library director, to develop a plan for library services. You should know what you want the library to be doing. You can call this a strategic plan or a long-range plan or whatever, but get a plan down in writing and use it as a guidepost. Then the board has the duty of setting the budget for the library. This budget should be based on the plan the board has developed. A related duty is to secure the funding to support the budget. For district libraries, that's usually simply a matter of publishing the budget you have adopted. In some cases, you may plan to do fundraising as well. Another duty is to adopt policies for the library. In Kansas, library boards are policy-making boards. They're not merely advisory boards. The library board actually sets policy on services, personnel, and anything else having to do with the library. The board also has the power to hire and fire the library director and fix the director's compensation, meaning salary and benefits. The board has the power of leasing or erecting a building for the library. Another duty of boards given in the law is to make annual reports to the state librarian. A final duty I want to note is to make the library free to the use of the residents of the district. The law requires free library service, which is usually interpreted to mean, at the least, using materials and equipment in the library and checking out materials. This doesn't mean that there can't be charges for some add-on services, such as photocopying. And the state regulations regarding regional library systems also require that if your library belongs to the regional library system, you must extend this free service to all residents of the region. Now let's start taking a look at the roles of library boards and library directors. First up, in the area of budget and finance. Boards and library directors work together to develop the budget, but as noted before, boards have the responsibility of adopting a budget. Then, administering the budget falls to the director. By this, I mean that within the constraints of the budget, the director is given authority to make expenditures without additional board authorization, except for perhaps a policy that orders for a single item with a cost exceeding X dollars should be brought to the board. $2,000 might be a good breaking point for this. Then the board and the director should review regular financial reports to see how the library is doing compared to what was budgeted for both revenues and expenditures. On to policies and procedures. As I've already said, boards have the responsibility of adopting policies for the library. This, however, shouldn't be done in a vacuum. A good situation is one where the director feels free to bring recommendations on policy matters to the board, and the board and director work together to develop the policy before adoption. Once adopted, it's up to the director to implement the most suitable procedures to carry out the policy. Collection development. As part of its policy-making power, the board should have in place a material selection or collection development policy and, as part of its budget-setting authority, there is a set amount for expenditures on library materials, such as books and DVDs. The duty of selecting which materials to purchase and then ordering them is the library directors, or in larger libraries, other staff members to whom the director delegates this duty. Boards should not be making decision about which books to purchase or which magazines to subscribe to. And finally, on personnel matters. The board hires the library director, evaluates the director, and if necessary, dismisses the director. The director, in turn, is responsible for hiring, evaluating, and if necessary, firing other staff members. This completes the topics I wanted to address in this training. I strongly encourage you, if you're a library board watching this as a group, to discuss the content among yourselves. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact either me or Kim Rudder, our library system consultant, to answer questions or to carry on a discussion. Our contact information is on this last slide. 
If you are a Southeast Kansas Library Board watching this as a group, and your library receives an allocation from the Southeast Kansas Library System, you should make a record of which members watch this training and on what date so that you can report that on next January's allocation worksheet. Thanks for watching this training.